And we're on. Good evening, everybody, and happy Eclipse Monday. It was no big deal here. It got a little dark, and then I got light again. But it was cloudy. Couldn't see anything anyway. So who cares? Let's see. Functional Histories is in the show. It says, hello, Art. And if uh, all the folks that are here yet, there's a, there's a few. There's a few more trickling in. You haven't been to Functional Histories YouTube channel, go over there and check it out. He does some pretty cool stuff. He's made a 1 to 64 scale of this little red truck behind me, which is pretty cool. So um, Monday night was planning on going to the junkyard today, get some parts for Big Richard. Uh, a couple parts for this and that. And I needed a Jeep JTEC computer so I could build a bench harness for one. Mm, rained out. Not going to go. And it rained. Sunday also. So the whole place is probably just a big mud pile and I'm not going to fight through mud and rain and everything else to get some, some used parts. Mr. Barry, what's happening? Hello there from North Dakota. Actually, my wife's going to North Dakota next week for work, going all the way up to, uh, up to the Minot area. So I told her to have fun and stay out of Canada. So who else do we have in tonight yet? But hopefully because today was not supposed to rain. It was only supposed to rain Tuesday, Wednesday. Now it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Hopefully that changes so we can get, I can get to the, uh, to the junkyard. It's Laverne pull and save by us and get um, parts I need for Big Richard. I need alternator brackets. I need a dipstick. I need a couple things for the brakes here and there. Some, just some small items and whatnots. Uh, so go there and uh, a couple other people that I've talked to have a shopping list for some stuff in case I run across here and there. But like I said, I want to do, because I have a, a, a bench harness and a test ECM for the LS motors uh, to do the tuning on that stuff. And I want to get, um, what's going on, Jim? Happy Eclipse Day to you too, sir. And then... Um, and Nick's, Nick's just popped in. Hey, Nick, how you doing? Where was I? Um, oh, yeah, I want to make a bench harness for uh, the JTEC computers and, and a couple others. And I got some, uh, like, Crown Vic, like, cop car computers in the in the garage. I think I got three or four of them. But I got no way to program them because I'm all out of cop cars at the minute. So I'd like to build a bench harness for that so I can do some tuning and stuff and some uh, practice and get more familiar with a couple of those computers uh, on the bench top instead of having to go to the uh, the junkyard. Turbo Tom is in the house. It's happening, Tom. Hi, all. Great eclipse day. Almost four minutes of darkness. Right. Colleen is here. What's going on? Glad to see you. And um, I said it when, when we first opened, but we're saying again, functional history. You look up in the chat. He's, he's the first one here. Just put up a video. Of this truck, a 164th model of this truck, um, matchbox size. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, it's it's kind of cool to have um, somebody make a model of your little of your little you know race truck and channel truck and stuff like that. So, looking forward to getting that. Um, the video on it's real good, so go ahead over there, check them out, watch that video. Support him in any way you can. All that kind of good stuff. So uh, so instead of going to the junkyard today and getting all that stuff and doing a video on that, we um, <clears throat> ordered some cabinets oh, about a month ago. And it's been a project because some assembly required on these. So we, uh, myself and the wife were working on those today. We got one, two, three of the six, three, three, not like three and a half of the six are done. Uh, the upper cabinets are going to have glass. So the inside of the cabinets need some staining and the stain we were given was an aerosol and it worked good for the first cabinet. And then about halfway through the can the can decided it wasn't going to work no more uh soaked the nozzle in 
you like paint thinner and all that kind of stuff to try to work the nozzles fine. It's just, um, it's no bueno on the stain, so we got to get more stain. Glenn Nickerson, what's going on, buddy? Glad to see you. Nice of you to be here. It's the art of totality. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. And then uh, let's see who else we got in here. So for uh, uh, the rest of this week, what do we got going on? Uh, we got cabinets, which we probably won't see. Um, my little air conditioning video was just because it was, you know, part of the day and I did it, but that's working real good. It's nice and muggy out today, so that worked real well. Got the new master cylinder for Big Richard, so I'll start working on the brakes. Going to pull off all the wheels. <laughs> and going after all the brakes, and we'll see if, you know, the rest of the truck was in the same flood that the engine and transmission was in, which I suspect it wasn't. I suspect that when whoever sold this truck to Kiwi, instead of a roller, they said, oh, yeah, it's 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 got an engine and trans, and it's, you know, you've seen what it looks like on the inside, just to get a few more bucks out of it for a, you want that was, you know, a junk engine at the time. So hopefully just the engine and trans are done. Hopefully Tony gets to getting the trans done pretty soon. Okay, Jim's got a question here. How can I check the ECU on my 90 Ranger? <sighs> it's hot and 2.9 auto. Do I have to do a smoke test or can someone bench test it if open is it usual? Is a, is a visual inspection adequate? Um, on a 90, you would have to. There's, there should be a plug under the hood. You, you, um, I don't remember the exact pins, but you can jump the two pins and it will flash the check engine light on the dash with the key on. That'll give you a code. It'll pulse out a 10 or a 32 or, 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 and just write those down. And then look up what those numbers are. If it, if you jump it and it doesn't make any flashing at all, um, then it then it then it has problems. If it has problems, then at that point you can open it up and you know take a look inside and the smell test. Usually, <laughs> on on those, you could just you know unplug it and take a big whiff and it'll smell like a burnt. Um, do you ever smell what a burnt? fluorescent light transformer smells like when those things go out not that they don't you know nobody uses a lot of them anymore but that burning oily yeah you, you'll smell that um so try it out jump it and if it gives you some codes it's still living and it's just not happy with something trace down the codes and you know go from there or if it doesn't flash or give you any codes it's done uh, pull the 2.9 out, put a V8 on it, and you'll be good to go. But that's the only way to really check it, uh, Check those on a 90. Yes, burnt electronics do smell bad, and it's, you'll you'll know it instantly. As soon as you take the thing out, you'll be like, Ugh. yeah, and you'll be like, okay, this thing's gone. Uh, those are pretty simple. From what I can remember, if you can get it open without damaging, and then if you open it up and stuff doesn't fall out, if it's toast, um, you should be able to see a good light, maybe a little magnifying glass, what's, what component on it's burnt up. If it's a burnt up, uh, like negative, a lot of times the ground will burn up on them. They get hot, and then the, the ground lead burns up. Probably not happy with the... 2.9 liter, not not Ford's best effort. No, but when they those little clone engines, when they are fresh, they run pretty good. They're not gonna be fast or make cool noises <laughs> or anything like that. And when you turn the AC on, it will slow the truck down. But uh, they will run forever with uh, just oil oil changes. Uh, okay. Question, Jimmy Ford, when I swapped a 318 LA into my 87 Dakota, I scrapped the Eco and went with an old Mopar electronic ignition. Probably saved you um, a bunch of headaches and stuff like that. Uh, well, I have 
for Big Richard, I have a I have a points distributor, and I have I have a couple electronic ones. I don't have a module. See if Kiwi's got a module, but I think we're just going to stick with the points on that one. If that point distributor doesn't have a bench shaft, which is also becoming a possibility. Yeah, I like it. I like it when it runs. It's cool, and it's twenty exactly. Um, yeah, you're not going to pass anybody on the freeway. Unless you're, you know, going downhill. <laughs> but yeah, once once it's running, it, those, those things just those things they just go. Just that's you know what's they're very functional, I guess, would be the best way to describe those little engines. But I've I've rebuilt half dozen of those, um, and they've all you know they they've all run beautiful um, when you get done you just same thing those you had those every, for some reason every set of those and you're you're not at this point but every set of those 2.9 liter cylinder heads uh, when you take them apart they always got a little too much warp for them for just a new set of head gaskets so you got to get them just a nice little deck on them and then then they're fine and beautiful and good to go it's fun in the snow with the posse. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, because it's got those little pizza cutter tires, you know, the stock ones that were on there and a posse. And it, yeah, a little six that gives it a chance to spin up. And yeah, it just loops and loops and loops. Big fun. Here's, um, where is it here? Here's, here's what mine's like with the posse. Same amount of fun, just a different way of doing it. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm glad it's working. I gave some good advice. My buddy had a 2.9 Ranger had it. So much blow by. Went through a quart of oil every 200 miles. Yeah. Woo. 302? Sure. Easy. On a 90, you get the... Uh, 90s are just mounts, and you can use factory exhaust manifolds. You can buy the headers and all the other BS to go with it, but a little, even a little semi-warmed up two-barrel two barrel 302 with 200 horse, say, screaming. You know, then you're doubling your horsepower of that, that 2.9, so um, 302 swapping a Ranger all day long. Um And see functional history. My girlfriend lost power there for a minute. Eclipse coincidence? I think not. LOL. So the eclipse is causing power outages. Mayhem everywhere because we can't see the sun. Sounds sounds practical. Um, <laughs> sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jim. I probably have done ten. This 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 one's not a 302. This is something else. But uh, probably done 10 uh, 302 swapped Ford Rangers. Everything from you know, like this body style all the way up. To the newest one I think I ever did was a 2001. Uh, that was a little bit of a pain because I used a uh, 302 V8 Explorer as a donor. I had uh, picked up a 2001 extended cab Ranger. Um, I don't have a whole lot of videos on it. I got some pictures. I can post up some pictures of it. This is before YouTube, but um, took that entire, because it was a two-wheel drive explorer. So I used the rear end. I used an engine, transmission, harness, everything like that. It all kind of just burps right in, plugs right in. Um, a, a couple wires and all your gauges on the dash work. OVD2 port works. So I ended up having, because I had, I bought the truck for 500 because it was a blown up motor and it had like 200,000 miles on it, but the body was okay. Got the rolled over Explorer donor from another buddy for 500 bucks. So I had a thousand bucks in this project. And, you know, I redid the interior and all this kind of stuff. But for that thousand dollars, I had a four wheel disc brake, V8. 
Ford Ranger, overdrive, cruise control, all the working dashes, shifter and everything on the dash work. It was just like a factory install. And it had a 373 posi on the rear end and four wheel disc brakes. It was a hoot. It would just, it would just, it would just kill people. <laughs> and it was, you know, it was just a tad warmed up, you know, P head Explorer or a GT 40 Explorer. I don't remember which one it was. Um, extended cab ranger and i lowered it and stuff like that and it was just it was just it was just the coolest thing and for some reason one day i lost my mind and sold it to a guy it's up in indiana somewhere oh no jim it's not a big secret it's a it's a turbo ls so i'll take all the hate but when i bought the truck it had a small block chevy that a big story uh, matthew ward is worth the hassle and money to tune my uh, stock 2004 Grand Marquis. It can be. Now, it depends what you're looking for. Um, if you're looking for, like, the police package too, but the police package had a different throttle body and coolers and things like that, a couple different things, but nothing that can't be swapped over easy enough. Um, if you're just looking to get a little bit more horsepower out of that Grand Marquis um, to start, I would start with exhaust because that's kind of an easy upgrade. Those factory mufflers are all, you know, nice and quiet and, you know, grandma, grandma loves it, you know, when she goes to church, but you open that up a little bit, that makes a, a big difference in those. Um, depends what you want to use it for. If you want to, you know, raise the shift points at full throttle, if you want to raise the, cause it, that, that has going to have a speed limiter on it too, 100 and, 1418 miles an hour you can get rid of that if you were using it for off-road and wanted to get rid of the, the catalytic converters then yes then definitely that will free up a lot of horsepower also um so yes there is advantages um to do you you know to do some of the basic stuff and unlike the computer i think it's if you're using an hp it's two credits on a gram key so it's 100 bucks plus someone to do it and then you know return shipping so you'd be like 225 bucks but um if you just want a little cruiser with a little bit more power to it like i said i'd start with exhaust and if you really want to get nuts you know put some gears in it because those four sixes love love gears you pop like a 373 uh in the rear end make a big difference in that car with it just with an exhaust and it's a whole different animal depends what you want to do with it matt um you know daily driver throw some exhaust on it and stuff like that and call it good you're looking to get any more out of it then yeah you're gonna need to tune love it okay jimmy power well it's just you know it's the way this one worked out yeah uh getting back on the falcon after after big richard yes the falcon's mad 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 at me um for all the time and effort i put into uh that truck uh i could have had the falcon you know finished painted cleared and you know be starting throw a new headliner and throw the glass back in it and just put it all back together it's a running and driving car and uh it's mad. <laughs> it's bad that it's, it's, it gets so neglected. That thing's been put off so many more times. I don't know why I put so much work into that car. Like I said, it's got a turbo 302. That's all fuel injected with the five tech. It's got a five speed swap. It's got a narrow eight, eight, uh, tubs, you know, a 275, 40 17s on the back of it. The thing just rips. And it's a lot of fun. It just it just keeps getting put off and put off and put off. So it's it's mad at me at the minute. So, um, but to answer your question, Glenn, yes, uh, had a 04 Silverado with a 48 LS smooth easy power. Yeah, there's they're they're nice motors. And what what makes them nice, my opinion, regardless of what name is on the valve cover, they're such a step up from the traditional small block so far as the quality of the metal in the block and the crank and some of the components they put to do in such a, a tight 
tight, tight stacking tolerances for all like all the bearings and the pistons and this and and and, and. it's just it's just a whole another level. You know, they take the ISO 2000, you know, whatever. They just um, make it a little bit better. Vortec heads, what's a little more content, Nick? I don't know what you got. I don't understand what you mean by the question. Okay. But yeah, no, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, finishing the Falcon. Uh, I'd like to finish the Falcon because I was <laughs> just telling myself better breathing. Yes, four hit four tech heads are better breathing for the put a set of those on as a stock replacement on the you know traditional 350 Chevy that came in you know Uncle Willie's Camaro. Yes, they do help. They do you know they are a big improvement for you know like again almost no money because they. You bolt right on. You have to change the intake manifold because of the bolt pattern, but that's really it. And you're good to go. They're a much better breathing head. Yes. Anyway, what I was wanting to do with once I get the Falcon done, I want to take that back garage because it's a complete shit show mess. Take everything out of it. Everything, toolboxes, welders, sandblasters, cabinets, everything. Okay, put it put it in the big garage with this truck and the Falcon. Because uh, I could stack the two on one side and have all the other crap from the back garage on the other side of that big garage. Clean it. Repaint everything. You take off, take down all the shelves, take down everything. Maybe leave the cabinets up, but take down everything, fix all the drywall, um, put a decent air conditioner in there. Cause now I it just, it's got like basically like a window app in there. I'd want to get a mini split. And um, old cars, I'll get to you in a second. Um, put in like a mini split for, for good AC and stuff like that. And I actually want to take make one half, make it just nice, like a, a nice garage where you don't grind and cut and weld and splatter everything. Half of that kind of divided off one half parking for a nice finished car, the other half, um, like a model railroad. <laughs> and that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother video. Um, hey, Josh, nice, nice for you to be here too. And, uh, future plans, right? But I mean, all new lights in the ceiling, can lights, you know, just make it just like, like a nice room, someplace you, you don't go in and go, you know, that you don't want to get dirty. So keep that clean. And then the, the other part of the garage, I can grind and weld and cut and destroy and everything like that. But I want to keep that back room, that back garage nice. One day, once the project stop. Okay, let's see. Old cars and music. Uh, bought a Durango home on a 08 Silverado with a 4.8 in it. Didn't look back once. If I didn't look back once in a while, I wouldn't have known I was towing anything back there. It, yeah, on a, on a 08 Silverado, pff, yeah, tow a house. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not going to matter. Um, like I said, Josh, good to be here. Glad to have you here. Uh, and exit hi. Make it too nice, it, and you'll be living in it. Yeah, well, the rest of my house is pretty much okay. I mean, it's it's pretty good. So I don't think that I just want it nice and clean. Maybe just so I can destroy it. Ron English. I'm a low key mechanic. What does it take to swap a three eight a supercharged three eight replacing a three point four in an O three Grand Am GT. My thoughts uh, from the congregation. Uh, uh, um, it would probably a Grand Am. I don't. I would have to defer Ron to that one to go. I don't know. I think it would be a hoot because. Those supercharged three eights are everywhere, and the three four is 
you know, while it's it's okay, it's a little anemic, and in a grand am that that three eight would that three eight would just would just rip. It would be a it would be a hoot. Um, but uh, what's my thoughts on replacing it? Yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. You should. Have I done it? Can you do it? I don't know, but yes. Um, by all means, if someone has done it before, see how they do it and, and do it because it would be, I think that'd be worth every penny to do that swap. What it, what tuning software would you recommend for a 94 to 96 Chevy LT, LT1 for Caprice and a Fleetwood? Pre-96, that's tough. Um, Again, Rusty, what are you, you know, we just want to get a little bit more out of them. Uh, those have, and I'm not sure because I'm, I'm guessing here because it, that's that those couple of years are a little fuzzy. If they're the same as like the early 80s Corvettes and stuff like that, you can do a piggyback chip on them. Um, about getting into them actually with some software and tuning them. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm going to have to say, I don't know. And if anyone else here knows, help Rusty out here. So, um, but that's a good question. I'll, I'll, I'll think about that this week and see if I can come up with something. For daily drive to Fleetwood. Uh, like I said, I'd, I'd have to think about that one for a minute, honestly. So um a no answer for you but sorry about that but you know we'll get to it abel d hello world hey abel how you doing uh a generous thought and a cool endeavor yeah it would be it'd be <laughs> that that car would that car would be a blast a supercharged 3.8 and you put a good exhaust on that on that 3.8 and a little bit more boost of them a smaller thing and you'd be good art can you please recommend the best type typewriter to my 59 Land Rover Series 2 single barrel carburetor. Um, okay, a, a Series 2. Now, is that a straight 6 or a straight 4 on there? Uh, I don't know. Uh, and, and a Land Rover. Uh, and it's a 59 Series 2. I'll tell you what, if you get bored with it, you could just drop it off for a while at the house. <laughs> Be glad to be glad to drive that one around. Uh, it's a straight four. Um, being a '59 boy, um, it's probably super low compression and uh, super uh, super conservative with the timing. Yeah. You know, so far as tuning, I mean, just a good tune up on the thing and maybe, you know, get away with recurving the distributor a little bit. But being a, being a 59, that's probably super low compression and not a whole lot. Um, okay, a little bit more thing. I'm switching from Zenith to Rochester. Yeah, the Rod, I mean, it, it'll it'll run. You know, uh, you're only going to get so much out of that out of that four cylinder because, like I said, it's it's a straight four, which is no harm, which is enough for that vehicle. Really, that's how they were made. But um, it's still going to be a low compression engine, so it's going to you know you love all the torque in the world, all the low end, great for crawling, going off road, but not a, not a not a big horsepower maker. I'm going to go to Elsie Smith, maybe. Don't get the context, but okay, we'll get back to that. Uh, this is my thoughts for No Name 2025, presently a crew member for the cat. Um, that'd be a hell of a car, and that would probably, I mean, a supercharged 3.8 and a Grand Am, that would hurt people's feelings, and that'd be awesome. Stray built 3393, 1959 was the last year they built a <laughs> Land Rover, built a reliable vehicle. Yeah, they had some, they had some issues there, um, you know, with those, with, with that aluminum engine and the wiring and then, 
you know, um, the guys that have real success with the Land Rovers that are, you know, late 60s, early 70s are all the diesel ones. You go down to any of the islands, that's all they, that's all they have is the, is the diesel Land Rovers because uh, they do last forever. And with the diesel, they run forever versus versus the gas ones. So I would have to agree with you on that one, Stray Bill. Um, probably good. JB. JB's little shop just stopped in to say, hi, how you doing, man? I haven't talked to you in a while. You know, I, I, I see your stuff that you're doing, but I really haven't talked to you in a while. Um, what's going on? I seen you did a rear end video the other day. It looked like, you know, that was perfect candidate to put a posse in that one from what it looked like. Jason's Jason's garage. Howdy folks. Again, brother, I haven't talked to you in a while. Uh, probably months. Just see, see how you're doing, how you're doing with the, um, the work and the RV stuff and all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, the Buick engine wasn't bad. No, not, not too bad. It was everything around it. <laughs> Was was a mess. Uh, nope, that's not my trying to get horsepower. Project improbable is becoming project impossible. <laughs> but yeah, um, you you seen the video? Uh, when was it? When did we go? Friday night. I don't even know what day it is anymore. It's Monday. Um, uh, Friday night went out to. Etheridge? Yeah, Etheridge. Um, motorsports Park, and it was cold. It was in the 40s, so um, there wasn't a whole lot of people there. But, you know, we got to do some some hop laps and Mission Improbable and stuff like Just Just had a blast. Just just, just beating the tar out of the thing. It's so much fun. And it sounds so cool with, with just the basically a straight pipe with a glass pack on it for an exhaust. It's just, it, it's just fun. Um, low buck fun, you know, it's like we're 16 years old again, and but it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the other thing that this project can't be an improbable exercise, it has to be built with the uttermost utility in mind. Yeah, I mean, like I said, stay for utility, it's just it's going to be a, a great just just runs thing, um, and not big horsepower, but you know. Run, 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 forever and ever and ever. Agreed. No, Land Rover built some pretty good stuff years after that, probably at least into the 80s and 90s. All right, Josh. Cool. Pro Land Rover. Um, so what's the fastest that Ranger has run? This Ranger has run uh, in the eighth mile, 7 to 100 miles an hour on nine pounds of boost, leaving on a foot brake. Uh, so it's not a trans brake. It's just a foot brake. And it's... Um, I got five grand in the whole truck and it's, it's a 200,000 mile LS with a, um, Elgin cam pack springs, eBay turbo and turbo manifold self-tuned factory stock computer. Um, the most money I spent on that, on that, on that truck was about two grand for the, for the, to get a real nice turbo 400 built by a guy in town here and uh, in the converter and the rest, it already had the rear end in the truck and stuff like that. And when I got it, it was just God awful, ugly, ruddy, icky, brownie red. You know, after I got it running from the guy, I got it. The guy I got it from in Alabama wrecked it, ran the cam flat, you know, wired the truck with wire nuts, all that kind of stuff. Straightened all that out. Got the original V8 to run with a, uh, the 350 with some semi-decent parts in it. You can see that some motor I opened up a couple weeks ago. It's that 010 motor, so it's got forged pistons, balanced bottom end, ugh, balanced bottom end. Uh, had a turbo 350, about a 3,000 RPM stall. Like I said, it's got some 373 gears in it, and uh, it ran okay. You know, quarter mile, I think it was 12.8, something like that, with a little 100 shot. So it wasn't a ripper by any means. And then and through some horse trading and stuff, uh, you know, sold a roller, got this and that. So I got this. Um, Hello, Mario. Uh, Levi, what's going on, buddy? 
Yeah. Yeah. Haven't, uh, haven't talked to you in a while, but been following you along a little bit. Haven't, uh, Shame on you abusing another man. <laughs> he asked me to do it. So, uh, Ronnie says, Mr. Jason, not too heavy either, I guess. No, this truck is, uh, 2,600 pounds with me in it. So it's, it's, it's pretty light. Uh, Are there any LS motors forged at all? You don't really need it. Um, you can buy all that stuff for them, but you know, it's just like anything else. You can spend your way into oblivion, go as fast as you want to go. But if you want to have fun, I just do it cheap, uh, and I, yeah, I laugh at everybody else. Um, Listen, Doc, I've been busy. As a budding during mating season. Okay, well, careful. Otherwise, you'll have a lot more responsibility in a few months. But be careful with that. But busy's good. Um, you know, busy busy in the race car, busy, busy at work. It's all good. Um, oh, nothing is forged from the factory is what I meant. Um... Like I said, I think who said Streetbuilt said maybe the LS6 is forged. I don't know. I, it's trivia. Don't know it. Um, I just, just know what I got, and I just watched everybody else spend the money and it not spend the money, and I went to not spend the money and still make, you know, grab the horsepower. Um, you know, just 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 fun, just a fun truck. Um, and really, honestly, an '86 Ranger with a front eye beam suspension and little skinny tires in front and no sway bars, stuff like that on an eighth mile at 700, 100 miles an hour, and you're hanging on to this dude. So it's about as really fast as it needs to be for this chassis. So <sighs> happy with it. It's a hell of a lot of fun, and it's not all tuned up to the moon, so I could just do it, uh, you know, lap after lap you know, weekend after weekend, change oil once a year. <laughs> Be good with it. Uh, very low maintenance. But anyway, but yeah, a uh, couple guys coming, coming in and out. Yeah, like I said, I haven't seen JB in a while or Ron or uh, Levi, any of those kind of stuff. Just been busy, been doing, um, you know, making videos full time trying to see what that's like and I think that it is forged from the factory yeah it's straight build I, I, I don't know I'll say I don't know I'm not going to make it up but just for going out and having fun it's cheap horsepower I mean the thing is you know with, with 9 pounds of boost it's probably making 550, 560 horsepower okay for no money um 20 years ago to make 550 or 600 horsepower. I mean, you know, you had a big block, you had this, you had this, you you spent thousands and thousands of stuff just on the motor. Right. You know, maybe that in the whole truck. So, uh, my project load includes a seven second car and a truck and soon to be eight second Laguna and almost nine second Colorado. I tried. I'm tired. Both of quitting time. Yeah. Um, so, so that Colorado that you're showing, you're good. That's gonna you're gonna make that the a nine second Colorado. That'll be that'll be nice to see. Probably about about seven hundred horse should get you there. I would think in that thing. Yeah, ex exactly. Twenty k to make that kind of power. 20 years ago and now you can do it with you know <laughs> a 200,000 mile motor I got for free and some you know parts off eBay it's just it's just ridiculous and it's on just 93 octane you know the the stock um, flex fuel injectors that are decapped and floating clean and stuff like that I got a 
buddy in Florida that does that 200 bucks for a set of injectors that flow, you know, that are 80 pounders, you know, make way north of 700 horsepower with those injectors. So I got plenty of room on the fuel side, plenty of room on the boost. Like I said, it's only running like nine pounds and I could turn that way up if I wanted. But again, it's fast enough for what this chassis is. I ran 10.x last year with like 500 hours and it's still full H pattern shifted every gear. Nice. It's a, yeah, if um, mostly little parts. Hello, sir. Nice to have you here. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if Bowling Green wasn't such a, because Bowling Green is the closest quarter mile track and all the others around here are eighth mile. If it wasn't such a, crap show to go up there because every time you go up there it seems like it, it rains or there's something or there you know there, there's a two-hour delay for an oil down on the track or something like that it's just not it's never been a real good experience going up there um everyone say hi to mostly all parts the finest voice of announcement in all of drag racing so um like i said that's um lima is it's a China Turbo and a stock LS with a truck Norris cam and cheap springs. Yup. Same. It's just, a, just a, yeah, I got the sloppy stage two Elgin 600 lift cam. Mm -hmm. Yep. China Turbo. Yeah, that's, that, that's all, that's all it takes. And you, and you're, you can run tens, which is crazy. Think about it. But so coming up this week uh, with the videos and what to, what to look for, I got a um, I got a company that actually seen the videos on the truck and promotionally sent me a very nice aluminum radiator electric fan setup. We'll, sh we'll show you that in, in a couple days. Um, they just wanted to get on board with the project. So, um, all them a little love and a little video. You'll see that later on this week. Uh, I appreciate your comment, but I put loans, Brian loans at the top of the list, followed by several other, other amazing voices. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's, it's what you do. You're, you're the best drag race announcer on this live cast. So, you got that going for you. That and a bag of donuts will get you a bag of donuts. So. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, but that would that that was neat because that's like a, just, just a bonus, you know, for, for, for Big Richard's not even my truck, which is the semi-painful part about it. Um But, you know, and it's all good, and I'll get to the brakes and all, all that kind of stuff and finish putting the engine together this week and stuff like that. Yeah, thanks for the reminder on this one. Um, Calvin and his father, Andrew, and his mother, uh, Niblack57 YouTube channel, his supercharged Studebaker on a trailer on the back of his Ford uh, F-250, they got stolen uh, while they were pit stopping in, you know, South Carolina, coming home from a race in Florida. So these are real cool guys. I've talked to them several times, been at, been them at the track, back and forth with them in the comments and stuff like that. Um, all good, real salt of the earth people. So go over to that Nivlac 57 YouTube channel. His latest video he put up is, has all the details on, you know, the car to look for and the truck to look for trailer, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, he lost his enclosed trailer with all the tools and the computers and everything that goes in a race trailer and his truck and his like baby of all time Studebaker race car. So go over there, check it out. Uh, if you're anywhere on the East coast, because who knows where that thing is by now. Um, Keep your eyes open, stuff like that. Help them out there. You know, like I said, real good salt of the earth. Good, good, good people. Uh, 
I know the 3.0 Dingham engine and the Cologne engine, but, but what's a 2.9? I'll let Jim answer that. Yeah, it's a shame. It, it really is a shame about that. I mean, it's just like, for one, you're, you're a car thief, so you should die instantly once you're, once you're found period that's that's my opinion of it i've that's one thing i've hated uh, more than i hate them more than dump trucks um it's car thieves so especially when you know he does okay but he's not just you know he has money coming out of his ears and to, and to lose um everything sucks bad so feel sorry for the guy hopefully anything we can do to help him out we can help him out get his car and his truck and his trailer and all his stuff back real good people uh for those interested in calvin posted license plate numbers and descriptions of everything on his youtube channel as well as his facebook page so yeah go check those out help him out if you can um that'd be awesome uh leave a, they're awesome people i hated hearing that i shared it on facebook and stuff like that too um just had to hear about that i've Gotten lucky staying in a hill, but I'm always nervous. Yeah, me too. Um, try to, you know, go to locals and stuff like that. But even because I had way back, if you turn the way back machine way back um, to about 1990. So way back before probably some of you was born. Um, I had a real nice Raven Black big block four speed 69 mustang on a trailer tied to a post in a in a apartment parking complex under a overhang trailer tied to a post chain chain on on the tires and stuff like that uh come out one morning to go to work because i figured it was like a friday or something like that so i figured i'd take the, the big loud nasty car to work and it would go and it wasn't towed from the apartment and stuff like that. So it was probably gone for a couple of days by the time I found it. Um, so I know the pain. It sucks bad. Or do you think you'll get Big Richard down the track during power tour? Um, maybe. Um, there, you know, the only opportunity for that would probably be at... Uh, at Bowling Green on, on day one, because day two is at the Nashville Speedway over by, by the house here. They don't have like a, a drag strip there. Um, may get it out there, not looking for big numbers out of it, but it would be a, it'd be an awful lot of fun. Uh, I hope to see a, you know a lot of people there. Um, that stinks. I'm on the roads all around suburban Philly area. Keep my eyes peeled. Yeah, he's from he's from the Pennsylvania area up there, stuff like that. It's Pennsylvania plates on the trailer and the truck and the and the Studebaker. So uh, anything we can do to help him out. There's an answer to that from Ollie's Garage. What's going on, bud? Uh, two six two eight two nine and the four are all Cologne engine family. That's what I thought. It's. It's almost down to sleeping in the truck. <laughs> yeah. Um, or take your big dog along, you know, and have, you know, big Cujo sleep in the truck, you know, in case anybody gets a dumb idea that they're going to take away your uh, your stuff. Let, let the dog at them. And uh, most of you have parts run. Uh, I've got a... I've also got a swept line D100. Curious as to what you're going to do for a fuel tank. My tank has a heel crack in it. And where's behind this? For 50 years, contemplating a 66 Mustang tank. For right now, um, because it is Kiwi's truck, Kiwi has a, I think a 20 gallon fuel cell. It's the same one that he used to get a large marge home from California. I'm uh, going to put that in the back. The stock tank that is behind the seat is still there, but it's unknown condition, and I don't want to mess with it. So we'll just, we're just going to uh, bolt this 20-gallon fuel cell to the bed, run a line to the existing, you know, patch it into the line, or just run a new line up to the manual pump on the motor and stuff like that and be dialed. So uh, 
that's what I'm doing. But a 66 tank might be a cool thing if you could cut a hole in the bed and just sink it right into the top there. Why not? Uh, Dean Stevenson's in the house. What's going on? Uh, yeah, it's sad to hear about Calvin's situation. Yes, it does suck. But hopefully get enough people, enough eyes on it. Something will pop up and find the dirty, rotten sock puppets who took his, who took his stuff. Uh, need to use air tags. Yeah. But, sh I mean, you know, it's, you don't, you don't think of that stuff until it's too late. Mostly all parts, uh, Mustang tank fits perfectly between the frame rails and the rear. There you go. Um, and a, in a, in a Mustang tanks are so cheap right now, um, because everybody makes one stuff like that. And yeah, and you could put a, put a gauge on it and the whole thing. I mean, that's, you know, actually sounds like a good plan. Um, just lurking while I'm working. Okay. Well, I appreciate that, bud. Just stopping on by. So, um, yeah, and talking about Big Richard, um, we got a new windshield for it coming, or Kiwi's got it, the windshield with the gasket. Um, the back glass is good, but it could use a new gasket. He's trying to find one of them. I said, I'll, I'll get to the brakes, pull off all the wheels this week, and do the radiator video and start assembling start assembling pistons and rings and stuff like that. Um, probably that'll be probably start that Wednesday. Tomorrow's kind of booked up already. Um, but Wednesday I should start probably putting that, uh, that dude back together. Kim fixes things. Good. Evening. Hello, Kim. Uh, good evening, Dr. Art. Good evening to you. And strip it only happens to someone else syndrome. Yeah. You don't think it's going to happen, and then it does, and it's horrible. Um, have the cab mounts. Uh, how's the engine coming? Okay, let's do this question first. Have the cab mounts been replaced? No, but they are still all there. The one cab mount that's like under the driver's feet's a little crusty. Um, we have a, a fix for that coming, but the rest of them are seem to be doing okay yet. Uh, the rest of that truck is, is pretty solid. So, and Robbie, how's the engine coming along? Um, like we just touched on that uh, cylinder heads are done. The blocks, you know, honed out and stuff like that. I'm going to this week. Um, I got all the old rings off the pistons, which was an act of God to get that done. I'm going to, uh, gap all the rings this week. Uh, put the rings on the pistons. Uh, and before I install them, I'm going to wash that block once more time with a little degreaser, a little Dawn, get every little bit of grit out and stuff that I can because, like I said, that motor was pretty gross. But it's looking really, really good. Get the motor as clean as possible. Uh, spray it all down again with, with the WD to keep it from corroding. Load, load in. You know, take the crank out, blow out all the oil passages, put the crank back in. Put the pistons in, um, get the cam set up. I have the cam, I have the lifters. Uh, cylinder heads are done. I have the gasket set. Got a new oil pump. Got a new intake. I got a four barrel off the, off the shelf for it. So it should come pretty quick. Um, like I said, I'm just after that, I'm just waiting for uh, Tony to finish up the trance for it. Hey, Ron, hey, Kim. Not replacing the cab mounts a good day. Yes, I had to do them on mostly late 60s, early 70s, Ford F F100s and F150s. Not fun. Um, uh, run English. Sub to Oli. Nice, nice. Um, if you're in a subbing mood, Ron, uh, functional histories, YouTube channel, just did a 164th model of my little red truck. Go ahead. Check it out. Um, 
it's a pretty cool channel. Uh, did did a real nice did a real nice tribute job for for a matchbox size model of this truck. Um, the same Haley. Uh, are you Nashville bound? Okay, they're just going back and forth. <coughs> but that that's my week coming up. Uh, hopefully, all goes smooth. Of course, Wednesday night we'll be on live with Tony. Um, let's see. Miles, which brand of cam did you use? The lifters, uh, and many are not made as well as some have been reported. That's a concern. The cam is, uh, it's a Summit Racing branded cam. It's, and it came with a brand new set of lifters, which I still haven't really inspected yet. They're still in the box. Um, haven't really heard anything bad about the Summit lifters. I've used the Summit cam and lifter stuff in the past before. Never had an issue. Hopefully won't have an issue with any of these lifters. I did retain the stock ones. <laughs> not that I would use. That's not that I would use. Used lifters on a new cam. But you can always, you know, check them up in the lathe and emery cloth them and put a new face on them and, and use those if, if some of those you know, either don't pump up or mushroom over or run the cam flight or, or, or uh, hopefully none of that happens. I got plenty of cam lube. Uh, going to use the Della motor oil on it. I got a zinc additive. I know how to break it a cam done it a hundred times. So hopefully we will be golden with that um, with any luck. Ron already sub the functional histories and stuff like that. Yeah, great question. So it was um, actually right here. The cam itself, the 6901, um, 235 bucks, cam and lifters. And it's a, basically it's a 440 lift. It's kind of the copy of the 7340 360 cam so it should run nice clean the heads up i didn't port them but all the stuff all the little casting flashes and the raised the little you know ports on the exhaust is all the common stuff that gets in the way that was cleaned up a little so it's going to be fresh on the bottom it's going to have a nice ignition uh a four barrel with another brock intake mild 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 work on the heads um and that cam, it should run nice. It should be a real nice running running car until we get um, the Hemi build for it. Come back to you in a second, Kim. Uh, auto impulse. When you when when are young when are young Oh, when you're probably when you're going to spank Uncle Tony's behind with your electric thingamabob. Um, that race isn't going to happen. He conceded that he would get his clock cleaned. Um, so virtually, yes. By virtue of a buy run, cleaned his clock. Um, so we will uh, continue. We got some other stuff in the works here for a little, little race challenge coming up later in the year. Kim, uh, measuring the crown on the lifters and the taper of the cam lobes should confirm that it's ground to break incorrectly. That's my understanding. Verify the machine work and you can't go wrong. Yeah, like I said, I've never had a problem with any of the, um, you know, Summit Racing branded cams or lifters and stuff like that. So uh, TBA, we'll let you know. Probably coming up. I'd like to say two weeks from now, but that, that just depends when the transmission gets back. So... Uh, uh, already fingers crossed during breaking. Yeah, uh, you can do what you can do. You could use the good. I use the Della motor oil in it because it's got all the additives in it. I add a little zinc, plenty of lube and cam break in and grease and you know everything you can to uh, make that cam and lifters live through the first five minutes. And they get through that, they're good. So uh, hopefully. 
we got uh, something good and stuff like that. Uh, Robbie, did you soak your lifters, Doctor Art? No, they're still in the box. Uh, they probably get a they'll probably get a little bit of a of a soak too far, but not. Uh, I you know I don't think it's super as necessary as possible, especially on a on a stock cam and stuff like that. So, or a stock profile Mopar cam, not stock cam from the motor, but a stock ish cam ish. We'll see. Uh, you know we'll get some oil in them, but um, the oiling system on this on that three eighteen is pretty good. They should get pumped up pretty quickly, I would think. Um, I'm going to, so, sorry. Um, uh, so, on, yeah. So, Uncle Tony forfeit. Yes, he forfeited that race. Correct. You are correct, sir. I have won by default. Abel, have you ever seen, did you see that the Patterson Museum in, in LA had an EV car show? And it looked like a Tesla showroom with a bunch of, Kids drinking their latte. No. No, and I probably wouldn't go. Um, I worked for an OEM that had EVs, and it doesn't do anything for me. I'd rather have a cool golf cart um, for you to use batteries. Or, or my go-kart. Uh, do you break in cams in a consistent RPM, or do you vary the RPM? I was instructed by a technician at Mopar Performance back in the 90s to vary between 2,500 and 3,500 RPM. Yes. Um, I do vary I do vary the RPM. Uh, at first startup, I will keep it at about 2,500 for the first minute or so, and then come up, come down, come up, come down, come up, come down. But not like that, that, but just you know, gently raise it, you know, 3,000, you know, 3,200. And then, you know, back down to 2,500. But yet, it's the key is that consistent RPM. And they, the reason they want it above 2,500, so you get all the, the splash oiling and everything effect on it to give that cam, like I said, the best chance it can. Because like I said, if you can make it past the five-minute mark um, with a new cam with no issues, you're golden. Just just go. Um you know, break the motor and change your oil, put new motor, put new oil back in it. Your cam should be fine. Now, if there is something wonky in the machining process or the heat treating process of the cam or the lifters or anything like that, yeah, you can't avoid that. But if you do those basic steps, keep that RPM up, um, get lots of, you know, splash oiling on the rest of the valve terrain, keep everything lubed and wet and cool and happy. Um, like I said, after five minutes, you're good because you're already born in that cam to its pattern. What is the mailman doing going out? Because I can see outside of my cameras and stuff like that. Mailman just drove by and it's eight o'clock at night. What the heck has he been doing? Uh, I'd even get a golf cart with a gas engine. <laughs> no, they don't break in cams and brand new cars it's, it's just a, it's a whole it's a whole different process so um like i said i've never had a problem breaking in the cam like i said besides the rash of you know the horrible lifters that went around a few years ago but i think most of those are made their way out of society hopefully curtis i checked out your video a few times i did not see any ranger build can we get a video on your Ranger, I'm trying to do a 5.3 swap on an 86 F-150. I'm looking for gauges that won't that work in a stock dash. Um, yeah, they should be. I mean, if you go to the thing and just type in Ranger, um, well, let's see. Let's while we're here, let's take a look. Help you out here, Curtis. I can't remember the exact names of them, but I can look for you real quick. Here we go. Da, 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 studio. Content. Bam. 
build. No. Um, look for 1986 Ford Ranger, Ford Ranger V8 teardown. Yeah, V8 Ford Ranger Part 7, fuel system Part 8, frame and rear suspension, turbo cross. Um, let's open up this here. Click this, copy link address, and Curtis, follow that link, and then um, that'll take you in between kind of when that LS and everything were getting put in the Ranger. There's probably six or eight videos on it, everything from... You know, installing the radiator in the cooler to making motor mounts to, to you know, wiring and stuff like that. So, um, and if you have any specific questions on that, I'm looking for gauges that will work in a stock dash. <sighs> That's a tough one because the, 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 um, the LS stuff is weird. Um I'm thinking steam power may be a viable alternative to EV. <laughs> yeah. You used to get bad hydraulic lifters every once in a while, 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, I, I must be, I must have been lucky. Uh, I've been watching the vids, just looking for a good overview. Um, don't really have an overview of it. Um, you know, that's a good idea. I could probably go into um a good detail on it and stuff like that for uh, an overview and stuff on it go into uh, you know like like the final assembly and stuff like that but um like i said curtis do this here um There's my email. Go ahead and then uh, send me an email. We'll talk back and forth and then get you on the phone and stuff like that. We can, we can go over some of that stuff for you. I'll do that for you. Um, Scotty Kilmer says that Toyota has a new engine that will make EV obsolete. Eh, in theory, they're, they're doing an ammonia engine. They're doing this. Um, Toyota has been experimenting with hydrogen for at least 20 years because um, I could I've seen the vehicles um, touch them was told not to look inside so uh, they're they're the light years ahead of everybody just like as usual thanks for the info if I delete the cats will it turn the check engine light on yes it will okay you can, um, I've used them before. They sell where you can find them anymore. I don't know because of the EPA, but the an O2 fooler. So basically you, you plug that in line with your O2 sensor that gives a false signal to the computer that everything is okie dokie with the catalytic converters, stuff like that board. But if you, if you tune it, you can just turn off that PO420 reporting to, for the check engine light to the computer that the, you know, those, Catalyst efficiency codes are out of whack with no cats, but I uh, tried. I try the O2 foolers first, and that should take care. Of if you just want to do that, you know, loosen up that exhaust a little bit with you know freeing up those cats and and the mufflers that are on it, and yeah, it'll make a big it'll make a big difference in that gray marquee. Is it true you're quitting your day job and doing full tube? E Full time, yes. Um, I actually retired. Um, 
last day was February 1st. It was probably off for a month before that, burning up vacation time. So this is what I'm doing full time. Um, may I do just this full time for a while? I don't know. We'll see what happens. i um, basically been taking vacation for a couple months. We'll see what happens. Um, I'd like to do this full time because it's a lot of fun. But, you know, stuff keeps coming, coming at you. They want the money. So we'll see. We'll see how long it lasts. We'll see how fast this, all this is money comes rolling in. Uh, as much as I like watching Scotty, he also throws out an I quit video every other day. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no problem, Curtis. Uh, Gerald, stir up, stir up pot little. Every good Ford has a Chevy engine and go LOL. Oh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, this one's this this one does okay with its little Chevy engine in it. Well, he's losing those, Clint. <laughs> no, not quite that. Um, watch four hundred Firebirds come off the line at Lordstrom in 1986 when they fired him up on a roller for the first time. They beat those things like a rented mules. So much for gentle cam break in. That's it. Everybody does it a little different. Um, so, yeah, most most OEMs, they just they put the motor in, they roll it to the end, they, they put it on the rollers, and they fire the motor up, and it runs, and they go park it. So there you go. There's your cam brake in theory. Uh, and this, and again, this, it's stock valve springs, stock rockers, stock push rods. Does, there's not a whole lot of you know, spring tension or you know, super lift to worry about and stuff like that. So it should be a pretty gentle break-in procedure. Shouldn't, not worried at all. <laughs> it's got to ever got handcuffed. You'd be unable to speak. That's funny right there. So, um, but... Been at this for a little bit over a little bit over an hour. Uh, I got to go back downstairs and finish putting cabinets together tonight, or at least finish up the one that's half put together, so I can get it out of get it out of the room it's in now and put it where it needs to be, so we can continue with the rest of our evening. But um, thanks for everyone in the chat. Appreciate everyone who stopped by. It means a lot. I really do appreciate it. Um, happy Eclipse Day to everybody. Hopefully Calvin gets his Studebaker back and um, we'll talk to everybody later this week. All right. Thanks guys. Appreciate it.